Hey guys, welcome back to Dance Chess Lounge. Today we're going to continue our preview of the Candidates Tournament. Today our player spotlight is Alexander Grischuk. Now, Grischuk is a Russian Grandmaster. He was born on October 31st, 1983. So as of today, he's 34 years old. His nickname is actually Sasha. So I remember a few years ago I was watching like a, a post- round wrap up and the players kept saying Sasha this and Sasha that and I was thinking to myself who's Sasha his name was Alexander <laughs> but anyway that's kind of uh interesting to know uh, one of his specialties is blitz chess he he can play fast chess really well and uh, he's actually won the, the world blitz championship uh three times now and he's an advocate for speeding up the the time controls in classical tournaments. He wants he wants a faster uh, gameplay, but ironically, he struggles with his time management in the classical tournaments. He's one of the guys that is uh, comes very close to flagging before he can get to his forty moves, and he'll wind up blitzing out like the last like six or seven moves uh, because he doesn't he doesn't manage uh, his time very well as far as his style goes uh, he's very unorthodox uh, there is nothing classical about the way he plays he doesn't play classical lines he doesn't play traditional lines uh, he, he everything he plays is kind of offbeat and he's not afraid to play like like an opening that would be considered uh, dubious or, or not that um, not that great for a world-class player he'll go ahead and play it and he does very well with it uh, players have a hard time playing against Alexander Grischuk uh, another interesting thing to know about him is that chess is not his everything chess is not his entire life uh, he's actually a professional poker player as well and there, there's been many rumors uh, throughout the years of how he'll play his tournament round, uh, his tournament chess round, and then he'll go to the casino and he'll spend hours at the casino playing poker uh, just to get back in time for the next chess round. So that's kind of also kind of interesting. Uh, the way that he qualified for the Canada's tournament this time is. He was the second place uh, finisher in the FIDE Grand Prix series. Uh, as you guys can remember from our previous video, uh, Mama Dierov won, won the, the Grand Prix series and Alexander Grischuk was the runner up. Finally, he's married to Natalia Zukova. She's a women's grandmaster. So I bet they have lots and lots of fun games and, and good study times. Okay, guys, let's go ahead and get into the game that I have prepared for you today. Since Grishuk is a uh, blitz chess specialist and, and, and a speed chess specialist, I figured I'll show you guys uh, one of his games and his, his most favorite elements. So this game is taken from the chess.com speed chess championship last year. And uh, he was playing against Maxime Vachir Legrave, the Frenchman. So Grishuk was black. Knight f3, knight f6. g3, g6, bishop g2, bishop g7. So as of now, we have this symmetrical uh, development here. Both players have castled. Now that they're, uh, I guess, as Yasser Serwan likes to say, They've built their home. They've built their house. You know, they've castled. They got their bishop on uh, fin kettle. Their knight is protecting. And so now the idea is to strike out in the center. So which way are they going to do it? Some players like to play um, D3 followed by C4, C4 or maybe D3 followed by E4. Uh, you could play b3 here and fin kettle the bishop there there it's a whole slew of things you could even play c4 here and go into like an english type of an opening 
So it's it's a whole slew of possibilities at this point still. So MVL decided to play C4, more like an English type. And now C6 here is a move that it blunts the light square bishop here. The light square bishop scope is kind of uh, uh, stymied here with the e with the C6 move. B3. That means White has a plan of developing his bishop to the queen side. Queen side fee and kettle. Now you have d6, d4. White is taking up space in the center. And then you have knight bd7. Now black here is playing like a restraining or a restraint type of structure. Uh, he's hoping that white is going to overextend with his pawns in the center. And then black will be able to counter attack. Bishop b2, developing his bishop. Rook e8 signals that black wants to strike out with e5. Knight c3. And here you go, e5, center strike. And this move was necessary because if black would play too passively here, he would get smothered. So e5 was, was definitely necessary. e4, white's taking more space in the center. E takes D, knight takes. Now you have knight C5 here. This move uh, hits the pawn on E4. It puts three attackers on the pawn there. So MVL plays rook E1 to reinforce the pawn. Knight G4 opens up the way for the dark square bishop. The dark square bishop is hitting the, the knight there on D4. B B4 attacks the knight. Now you have some tactics here. The game started out as like a slow positional battle. Both players were just trying to develop their pieces and uh, maneuver, basically. Now the game is getting a little sharper. It's getting a little tactical because now if white captures the knight on C5, then the queen will capture the bishop here on b2 as shown on in the, on the screen here so in the game MVL decided to play a3 to reinforce his pawn there and now you have a5 to try to break up the queen side pawns the knight goes back to a2 which is not the best move in this position because now after a takes b a takes b the knight jumps in a4 and guys can you believe it mvo actually resigned right here 16 moves deep and he's already resigning the game because check it out the knight is hitting the bishop here right but the bishop, the dark square bishop, and the queen is hitting the knight. So MVO is going to lose a piece no matter what. No matter what happens next. So play might have continued queen c2 to protect the bishop. And then you would have knight takes bishop. And if the... And then maybe c5 here with the... With the tempo on the queen and try to get the queen off of the knight because the queen was attacking that knight then you would just have d take c b take c and then the queen drops back to d8 and still you have the bishop and the queen both on the knight there so mvl is is, is unavoidable for him to lose a piece and then also let me just show you here if MVL would have just played uh, recaptured the the knight queen takes knight and then that's really devastating for him because after that you have bishop takes d4 and then it's hitting the the, the bishop's hitting the queen and then also when the queen moves it's hitting the rook you have the battery here, the queen and bishop battery, uh, accompanied with the knight here on g4, all attacking the f2 square. 
and he's down a piece. So that would really be devastating. So MVO just resigned here. Great game by Grishuk. It really showed uh, his his prowess in speed chess. <laughs> so, okay, guys. As, as far as the candidates coming up, I think Grishuk is a real threat, but I don't think he's going to win. He's not my pick. Just because he struggles with his time management in classical games. If he can get his time management together and in, in order and under control, I should say, then he is a real threat to, to challenge. But we'll see. Only time will tell. Okay, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time.